Hello friends and welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica and we are in our Tinkercad circuits tutorial. So if you're into building circuits, this is the site for you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and support us at patreon.com slash Research. So let's get started. Here we're gonna, in our new circuit creation, we are gonna make a touch light. So this is gonna be a light that when we sort of touch two wires together, then it will turn on for us. And we're gonna do that using a voltage comparator. This shouldn't be too new to you because we have some other voltage comparator circuits out there, but it might be your first time with it. So we are using what's called a 393. It's a dual comparator. You can take that out and put it in your breadboard and we can check out the pins. Here's output of one. This is either low or high depending on if these two inputs, who wins out. If the input from um, one negative is higher than the input from one positive, that's like, hmm, negative shouldn't be bigger than positive. That's weird. Let's, let's tell the world about it. So it's going to be something like that where we have it where this one's higher or that one's higher. Depending on what kind of output, how we hook up our LED, we can choose if it's high or low. We have the ground. This is another set of two things that you might want to compare to each other and their output. And then we have power right here. So the first thing that we'll do is we will power up our circuit. So let's get some batteries out here. So I've got a 1.5 volt battery, but if it's clicked and surrounded in blue, you'll have this lovely menu up here and you can change the count of your batteries. So you can change it to six batteries, let's say, and then we can wire everything up accordingly. So I am going to first power my rails like we do in all of our other projects. And I'm gonna color that red so I know which one is hot and which one is ground. That just helps me figure those things out. Then over here, what I can do is I can actually also, we'll put this in red, I can connect the top and the bottom rails. So the top and the bottom rails are not naturally connected. It's just these ones that show up in green that are connected. So right now I've got, I've connected it. So I have this one, which is hits all these green guys, which then goes into this rail, which hits all these, which then goes in here and down to this rail. So I have a bunch of power options and I can do the same thing with my ground. So I'll change my wire color to black and I will do my same sort of little jumper situation down here. Oops, and it changed, for some reason, it changed this guy to black too. We want that to be red. All right, so we have the two things that we're comparing and their output and then we have another two things. These are completely different from each other. And then we have our power and our ground. So the first thing you should always do is power your circuit and also ground your circuits. These are called integrated circuit chips. And we want to make sure that we are nice and treat them lovely. Nothing will happen if we don't power it or ground it. All right. So what we're going to do is on input one, I am going to split this six volts in half and I'm going to basically put three volts in here. All right. And the way that I can do that is I can use some resistors. Oops, not in my code. Sorry about that. Let's, here we go. Here is a resistor and I'm going to flip it on its side. And basically I'm going to take one resistor and I'm going to put these guys over here. We're going to take it from between. So between the two resistors is what goes into my thing and we're gonna if we use the same resistors we will actually split it all in half so if i take this and i come down into here let's turn that red and this guy will go into ground we'll turn that black and now what we can do if you wanted to see how that split it is they actually have a voltmeter here that you can pull out. So here is a really handy multimeter. It's got your positive and your negative. I'm gonna plug the negative into ground and I'll take the positive from right here, which is what is going into my chip. And let's change the color of that. Let's change that to turquoise. And so we'll change this to turquoise as well because it's gonna be the same voltage reading. And if I hit start simulation, you'll notice I have three volts here. If I were to move this, 
if I stop this and I move it over to being where it is high, I'll read six volts. That's how much battery I have. So here I have six volts now. 5.99 is close enough to six. And so what I've done is I've actually split the voltage in half. All right, and that gives me three volt volts that goes into this input one, which is very, very handy. We can leave that there if we want to check those things out. If you ever have trouble trying to build, make sure you're not on in your simulation because that makes it a little more difficult. Um, if I'm gonna leave this here, I'm gonna delete this real fast and I'm actually just gonna make it a little bit prettier and go straight up. We'll call it that black. All right, so we have a constant three volts coming in here and now what's gonna go in here is actually what we'll choose whether or not our LED lights up. We're gonna do it in a very, very similar way of making sort of this voltage splitter, except for some of the times the voltage splitter will be on and sometimes it won't be on, and that will depend if we're quote unquote touching it. So let's get a resistor out. I'm gonna make this resistor a little bit bigger this time. I'm gonna put it at 4.7 mega ohms. So if you click, so it's outlined in blue, you'll have this lovely menu pop up right here. You can name your resistors. That will become really, really helpful as we dive into more difficult circuits. We'll really start doing that some more. Um, but these ones are not as bad, so we don't need to worry too much. All right, we're going to call this 4.7 mega ohms. The big M is mega, so not milli ohms with the little M. Big M for mega ohms. And I am going to rotate this. So here is the other piece that I'm comparing to. So I'm going to have this guy go into that and it will come from full voltage. So it'll come from six volts right here. And then I want to have two wires that I can touch together. Now, if you were to like come down here, it won't actually ever let you make a wire that doesn't have an ending, which is a little tricky because I want to pretend like I'm coming over and I'm putting my thumb across two wires. So the way I thought to do this was actually a slide switch I'm gonna flip it over here. And what we'll do is we will connect one side here into our slide switch and we're gonna do it through a resistor and we'll do it through what we consider human resistance. So this is gonna be our thumb covering the two. So we'll put that at about 10 kilo ohms. And what we can do then is we'll have this guy right here and it's gonna go into this row right here. So let's see if we can move this whole, can I move the whole thing over? Nope. All right, so we're gonna come right up into here. Like this, let's color this maybe purple. And then we're gonna go from here into our ground. So we'll color that black. All right, now when the switch is over here, there's actually nothing happening. This is basically like this resistor doesn't exist these two wires are open and not touching. And then when I click the switch this way, I've connected the two through my pretend resistor thumb here. And I've connected them through my resistance and we're gonna have that light up in LED, which I think will be really fun. We can also, if we wanted to, look at the voltage across that pin. So again, we would wanna hook our negative into ground and this would go right up over here. So what I'm gonna do actually instead is I'm gonna put it right here. And then let's color this yellow. It kind of goes with the, the look. Oops, I'm gonna go one row up. That way it looks a little prettier and this will just sort of be, we can monitor what that is. And in fact, if we start our simulation, you can see that when I'm touching it, it has a very low voltage. And when I'm not touching it, it has a very high voltage. And what's really important is when I'm not touching those two wires, this voltage is higher than this voltage. And when I am touching it, this voltage is lower than this voltage. So here's my reference. One time I'm above it and the next time I'm below it. And that is gonna be seen in what our output looks like. If I was always below it or always above that voltage, nothing would happen in my circuit. And that's really cool to be able to see that happen. So now we're gonna set it up so we can see it happen visually with an LED. So let's pull an LED out. And again, if you don't like red, you can always change the colors, highlighting it in blue by clicking on it 
and then you can change to any color that you like there. All right, so let's put our little LED right up here. And I'm gonna connect the anode of this LED, or the, sorry, the cathode of this LED to the output of one. All right, and the way that I can kind of do that cleanly is let's choose a new color. Let's do green, since it's going to the green LED. And I can sort of make my wire come along. Oops, let's do it one down, just like this. So you can sort of see how you would follow that wire right here. And then from here, we're gonna go through a resistor. You always wanna add those resistors in for the LEDs. Um, so it helps them manage their voltage. Oh, I'm just in the wrong spot. Let's see, let's move this over one. And then we'll move this guy back one. So to move them, you just click on them and you can move them really easily. For the wires, if you click on the wire, you get those dots. And when you hover over it, you get a white dot and then you can move that wire without having to delete it. All right, so now I can go into my resistor. I'm gonna go from here to the high voltage of my battery and we'll color that red because it's high. All right, so now we can start our simulation. It starts off, this one is higher voltage than that, so it's comparing the two. And when I flip this switch, it's comparing, the comparison has shifted and my light has turned on, which is a really cool way to see this. And what you can do with this is you could actually continually compare. So if I had, let's say, four sort of spots to go in, I could compare four different spots and as I maybe increase this resistance, or I hit it across four different things. I could light up LEDs in successive order, which is a project we will be doing, not with the LM393, but with the LM339, and it looks very, very similar. You'll notice here to the 393, they do almost the same thing, but instead of having two inputs and outputs that are separated, they have four inputs and outputs that are separated. So hopefully if you enjoyed this project, you will enjoy doing that project. Make sure you check out our other 555 timer videos, our simple circuits, and we got some Arduino circuits coming up soon that will teach you a little bit of programming. It'll be a ton of fun. Make sure you check us out at patreon.com slash Rosie Research, and thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great one, friends.